JP, how did you do that? Oh, that? Well, that's all due to physics. And, you know, physics plays a big role in skateboarding. I'll teach you. Before I teach you about the physics in skateboarding, I'm going to teach you about the parts of skateboard. So you see the whole wooden part? That's the, that's the deck. Then you got the grip tape, the rough surface over here. You got uh, the bolts, the things that keeps everything together in place. You got the bearings and you got wheels. Now it's time to, time to learn. Uh, but before I teach you about the physics in skateboarding, let me teach you about the history of it. Well, it originated in California in the 1950s when surfers uh, wanted to surf on land. Uh, however, no one is accredited for the creation of the skateboard. They just made progress little by little and eventually ended up with wood, wheels, uh, you know, what we know today. Uh, for an ollie, uh, what you want to do is put your back foot on the tail of the board and your front foot about in the middle or so. So, to start off the ollie, you pop with your back foot. You hit the back, the tail of the board as hard as you can. And what this does, this, um, a big part of why it is possible to ollie is due to uh, Newton's third law, which states that for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So, stomping on the board is the action force, and the reaction force is the skateboard going up, lifting in the air. And now, in your front foot, once you're in the air, your front foot, which should be about in the middle, uh, slides forward. And what this does is after you pop, the, the sliding of your foot, the sliding friction, will help level the board and help you achieve uh, more air. And once you are at your peak, this is when you have the most potential energy. And then as you land, it turns into different kinds of energy because the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. When it seems like it's lost, it just changes into other forms, like the sound it makes, the temperature, and yeah. Friction also plays a huge part in skating. Like, when I move, it's all due to friction because, well, friction is uh, a force that opposes motion between two surfaces that are in contact, which is my wheels and the flat surface of the ground. So. When I'm on a skateboard and I apply force with my foot, I start moving because the force that I apply on my skateboard was able to overcome uh, the friction of the flat surface. However, friction also explains why I'm able to stop on a skateboard. As I move, I am able to increase the friction by popping my tail and bringing my board to a stop. Newton's first law could also be seen in skateboarding. An object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will maintain its velocity unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Uh, I'm staying perfectly still here on my skateboard and as my friend pushes me, that is the unbalanced force that causes me to move. And this could also be seen the other way around. Like if I, if, as I'm I will eventually come to a stop with friction, which is an unbalanced force. Over here, the table. 